Hey guys, and welcome to Hada Castro. In today's video, we'll be exploring a very interesting topic, and that is the pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts. So let's get started. So what are pancreatic cysts? So a cyst within the pancreatic gland is a closed sac lined with an outer epithelium, which contains fluid. So as we can see in this image below, this is basically what a cyst within the pancreas looks like. It's a completely closed sac, which is lined with an outer epithelium, which is filled with fluid within its cavity. And that's basically what a pancreatic cyst is. So let's take a closer look at what a pancreatic pseudocyst is. So a pseudocyst of the pancreas is a cyst that is not contained within an enclosed sac of its own with an epithelium lining. Instead, the pseudocyst is formed within a cavity or space within the pancreas and is surrounded by fibrous tissue. So unlike the simple pancreatic cysts, the pseudocysts actually form within any part of the pancreas in just a cavity or space, and it fills with fluid and surrounding it is actually pancreatic fibrous tissue. It doesn't have that epithelium lining that the pancreatic cysts have. So the pseudocysts also contain inflammatory pancreatic fluid, particularly the digestive enzyme amylase and some semi-solid matter. So this is what the pseudocyst looks like. So it's also filled with some sort of fluid. Here, it usually contains inflammatory material. And we also have some semi-solid matter, which is found within the cyst. And around it is a fibrous covering or fibrous outer lining of the cyst. So the pancreatic pseudocysts may arise in patients with acute or chronic pancreatitis. They may arise when there is a blockage in the pancreatic ductal system. And they're usually round or oval in shape. And they actually make up the most common pancreatic cystic lesions. They make up about 75 to 80 percent of all pancreatic cysts. So the pseudocysts are actually very common. They are benign, meaning they are non-cancerous, and they affect approximately one in every 1,000 adults per year. So now let's briefly mention some symptoms of pancreatic cysts or pseudocysts. So most pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts will remain asymptomatic, but over time, however, moderate to severe symptoms may arise and include severe persistent pain in the abdomen and sometimes in the back region, nausea and vomiting, and abdominal bloating. The complications of pancreatic cysts. So some of these cysts may become infected. So infection which leads to the development of a pancreatic abscess. So usually fluid found within the cyst is of clear and non-pathogenic material. But sometimes when these cysts become infected, they can become pyogenic, which means bacteria starts to thrive within them. And this can lead to a pancreatic abscess. So we can also have the rupturing of that pseudocyst, which means they break open, or a hemorrhage, bleeding, which could also essentially become life-threatening. We can also have biliary complications. So when a large cyst blocks the common bile duct, it will lead to jaundice. So the bile usually drains into the duodenum in a very closely related ductal system with the pancreatic ducts draining into the duodenum. So when we have a cyst which is formed somewhere around here, it will actually prevent the gallbladder from releasing the bile into the duodenum. The gallbladder will then extend, become enlarged, we'll have a cholecystitis, which is the inflammation of the gallbladder, and we'll have large amounts of bilirubin which will be floating around in the blood. Because now, if that bile is stuck and unable to go anywhere, it's going to spill into the blood. And this will lead to jaundice. So jaundice is the yellowing of the skin and the mucosas of the body. We can also have portal hypertension or high blood pressure of the splenic vein or portal vein. And this will actually require surgery. So how are pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts diagnosed? So the first thing we can do is a transabdominal ultrasound. And here, sound waves detect the pancreatic pseudocysts or gallstones that could potentially cause a pseudocyst. We can also do an abdominal CT, which is computerized tomography. And here, more detailed images are taken of the surrounding anatomy and pathology information than the ultrasound images. We can also use MRI and MRCP, which will also provide sharper imaging of the fluids and debris in the pseudocyst. And we can do ERCP, which is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and here the structure of the common bile duct, other bile ducts, and the pancreatic ducts are assessed. So in this image on my right, we have an ultrasound image. And here the pancreatic pseudocyst is seen with minimal internal debris. So as we can see here, it has some minimal debris at the bottom here on a conventional ultrasound. And this is actually from a 32-year-old female with a history of drug-related pancreatitis. 
and persistent epigastric pain. The transverse image shows a round cystic mass in the pancreatic head with minimal internal debris in the most dependent portion, which is shown in the arrow. So this is actually found within the head of the pancreas. As we know, the pancreatic organ is quite large, and the pseudocyst is actually found within the head of the pancreas, and as we can see here, there's minimal debris at the bottom. So how are pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts treated? So the majority of pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts will resolve on their own, and they therefore will not require any treatment. So as we said, many patients are actually asymptomatic, and the majority of these cysts actually disappear on their own. So there's actually no real alarm. However, when symptoms do become persistent, or complications emerge, or the cysts become larger than six centimeters in size, then drainage is indicated. So there are three main methods of cyst drainage. The first one is called endoscopic drainage, so here a long flexible lighted tube called an endoscope is inserted into the mouth and into the throat and is then maneuvered through the esophagus, stomach and duodenum into the pancreas. So somewhere here and we can puncture and suction and endoscopically drain this cyst from here. We can also use percutaneous catheter drainage and this uses a hollow tube inserted into the body to remove the fluid. And of course we can do surgical drainage either via open surgery or laparoscopic surgery using a laparoscope or surgical tool that only requires a small incision. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on pancreatic cysts and pseudocysts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.